everybody. How are you? I'm going to do some baking and I thought you might want to join me and bake with me. And it's a very simplified version of the recipe. So if you are not a natural baker or you don't have a lot of storage space for your baked goods or you just, you know, haven't baked in a while and want to get back into the groove of it, this video is for you. We can get back into the groove together because it's been a while since I've baked. And although I did make an awesome, this is bugging me, sorry. I did make an awesome apple pie uh, a week or so ago. That was really, really good. But today I'm doing biscuits and I have a love-hate relationship with baking biscuits. But Anzacs I'm generally quite happy with. So, hi Lucy. I'm going to do Anzac biscuits today. It's a really simple recipe. In fact, this one is a lot simpler than, than the one I usually use. I'm switching up the white sugar for brown sugar today. So I can't say it's traditional, but apart from that, ingredients are very similar. The only difference is I'm halving the recipe and I don't know if that's going to make a difference with the bicarb factor because you get a really cool science experiment sort of feeling when you make Anzac biscuits due to adding bicarb to your hot butter and golden syrup. Okay, so if you're cooking with babies or toddlers or young children, this is a really good recipe to do because of that scientific style reaction. Um, if you've got babies, pop them in a high chair, give them a couple of measuring cups to bang around and a little bit of desiccated coconut in a bowl or something, maybe a touch of sugar, just something for them to mix around and that'll make this baking baby friendly. Obviously not too young because you don't want to just give sugar and coconut to a newborn baby, but you guys get where I'm coming from, right? I'm going to shut this door so we don't get too much traffic noise. Hang on, it looks like my cat wants to come in. I'll be back. here so you might I'll have to leave the door open now you might see Lily here and there as I point you down to the countertop anyway that's enough rambling for one day I'm gonna wash my hands and then we'll get started with the recipe if you're cooking with me preheat your oven to about 175 or 180 Celsius we're gonna need that kind of heat for Anzac biscuits just gonna get my hands a quick wash Okay, yeah, so if you've got toddlers, stick them in a high chair or put them up next to you on the counter or stand them on a step with you and give them some of these ingredients because the dry ingredients are really, really good for them to measure. If you are making this, not necessarily live, but after school with school-aged children, particularly primary school-aged children, get them to do most of it, okay, because this is a, it, it's such a kid-friendly recipe and they all love it. Okay, so we're going to start with dry ingredients. You're going to need really simple measurements half a cup of plain flour you're gonna need half a cup of rolled oats if you want the recipe just comment and I'll uh, post it later on half a cup of brown sugar right so your first three ingredients are so easy half a cup of each one that's it right then you're gonna need a quarter cup of coconut when did I buy this yeah we're good quarter cup of coconut, you want about 60 grams of butter, maybe 65, so we'll get the butter out now. I'll just get my butter in these because I can measure it out and cut it. And golden syrup. I have a couple, so I'm probably going to try and use this one first. Golden syrup is very hard to get out of here, so a jar might be easier, but the jars are more expensive. So, you know, make the call based on your budget. Right, okay. I'm going to tip that upside down so it has time to go down. So, you need one tablespoon of golden syrup, half a tablespoon of water, and a quarter teaspoon of bicarb, not baking powder. Bicarb will give you the reaction that you need. Okay, let's start measuring. I'm going to put you down on the counter so you can see me cook. And if you are cooking too, feel free to let me know if you have any questions. Okay, where am I going to put you? I need to put you somewhere where I can still see you. Okay. Hi, Tan. How are ya? I'm making Anzac biscuits. Can you see? Can you see here? It kind of works, right? There we go. 
There we go. All right, so half cups, everybody. Now, I know I said half a cup, but I measure with a quarter cup because it's just, you know, less to clean if I use the same one. So I'm putting in two of these. You want a half a cup of plain flour. One. Two. Done. Then I'm going to open up my rolled oats. And I really should have got my scissors earlier. Here they are. That'll do. And you want half a cup of rolled oats. Don't get quick oats. Don't get quick oats. Get rolled oats. You can get them in Aldi. They're a dollar. So easy. So I'm doing two of these. This would be great for kids to cook with you because kids don't naturally love oats unless they mix them in with something tasty, right? So this is another way to get oats into the kids. I have no nutritional training. I just know that, I don't know, I feel fuller for longer if I eat oats. So yeah, anyway, half a cup of oats. Half a cup of brown sugar. If you only have white sugar, that's fine. And you can do your sugar to taste right you don't have to do a half cup if you don't want a lot of sugar i like sugar so i'm okay with it but i like to pack it down firmly too okay sugar's in and now we want a quarter cup of coconut and that's why i measure with this guy which is a quarter size because i can't be bothered washing two measuring cups because you guys know me i like to make things easy so i'm just going to tip a quarter of a cup in here slightly over because it's not too bad okay so your dry ingredients you just want to give them a little mix together you don't need a fancy spoon but if you have a wooden spoon go ahead and use it I don't so I'm just going to use this be nice and easy this is the job for the kids even toddlers can do this part nice and easy so include a minute because it stops them from clinging to your knees complaining that they're starving <laughs> I like to make my recipes kid friendly. It's easy for me to cook this now because the kids are at school. But you know what? Often we're trying to cook dinner and snacks and everything all in one go and the kids are with us. So friendly cooking is a great idea. So I'm going to put that aside for now. And now we're going to work on the other ingredients, which means I need a saucer. Which I have not washed. Do you want to know a secret about saucepans? Do you want to know a secret about saucepans? I will never again buy a set of saucepans. And you know why? Because sets come in sets of four or six, right? I use two saucepans all the time. A big one and a small one. And that's it. My cutter, my, my cutter, my cupboard is cluttered with saucepans that I never use. So I'm going to declutter them soon. But yeah, don't, buy buying a, don't bother buying a saucepan set unless you think you're going to use all of them. Anyway, rent over. Let's cook. So... We have our saucepan, okay? And what you wanna do is melt your butter and then you wanna add your golden syrup and then you wanna add a little bit of water as well, okay? So we'll measure our butter first, around 60 grams is what I'm using for the butter. I'm just gonna kinda of eyeball it. Can you see me? So I'm basically just gonna go, okay, well that's 100, that's 50. I'm gonna go about there, okay? Straight down. I just use unsalted butter and I'm basically going to just kind of rest it on this paper here and slice it into smaller parts but you don't have to it just takes longer to melt down and you do want it to melt but not burn so whatever floats your boat here we go wrap your butter up again if you're not going to put it in a butter dish and that can go back in the fridge Okay, so you want to melt your batter first. You want to come on over with me to the stove. Sorry, just got a phone call. Didn't recognise the number, so it's going to have to wait. Don't worry, it's not. 
not school. <laughs> okay, let's see if we can turn here. No, that's not the right way. Let's see if you can turn this way. You might fall. Okay, I think we're good. You're kind of on the edge. So if you fall, please tell me. Okay, so I'm gonna put the butter on here. Nice low, maybe medium heat. to wet my tablespoon because then it turns out a little bit easier. I don't know if you can see, we're going to try this again. How about we put you... If you're watching, just give me a... Press a button and let me know if you can see that. Okay. I'm not going to put the fan on because it's going to be harder to talk. But basically, see how you just put that on a medium heat and it does its job for you? So remember, we're doing one, oh, by the way, this makes about 12 to 15 cookies. So we're going to do one tablespoon of golden syrup, half a tablespoon of water. I'm going to turn this up a little bit more now. Just swish it around. Do it like the chefs do it. It doesn't have to be fancy, as long as you're having a bit of fun with it. Okay. All right, I'm going to start to pour the golden syrup in. It's going to be a little bit slow to get it out of the tablespoon and into the saucepan. But I like to measure the golden syrup quite well. Let's just do this here for a second while I shake this butter around. Okay. Taking it sweet time. But that's okay. We're not in a massive hurry. If you've got kids working with you at this point, let them do the golden syrup because that's a really fun one. And when they find that it doesn't come out again very easily, <laughs> they're going to want to stick their fingers and lick them. So that's fine. Gives them a bit of fun. Turn this heat down a little now. Almost there, look how close we are. Look. Now my hob is a little bit hot and my butter is melted. So I'm gonna just take it off the heat a little bit there. Come on. Almost ready. Okay. Can I do it without dripping? Yeah, no, I can't. Okay, so golden syrup in. If you need to, you can grab a little teaspoon and kind of dig it out. Sometimes I also like to do this where I just give it like a little lucky squeeze and try and even out that squeeze with whatever's left in the tablespoon. I mean, I don't think the world's going to end if you don't get it exactly right, but it may affect the texture, that's all. Okay, now we're going to do our half tablespoon of water. For this, I'm just taking the saucepan with me to the sink. Okay, and now we're all syruped and buttered and watered, and now we do the fun part. So you just want a quarter teaspoon of bicarb, everybody. Just a quarter. Okay, so the littlest one, don't use baking powder, it won't give you the same effect. Okay, pop this in, and then we're going to give it a little mix around. See how that's coming up all bubbly? That's the part the kids are going to love. How cool is that, right? Now, if you're doing a double batch of these and you're doing a whole half a teaspoon of bicarb in double the butter and double the syrup, it's even more effective. But I love that little, hang on, can you see it? Can I zoom you? I don't know if you can see it, but it gets really thick and bubbly and it's beautiful. Okay, let's zoom you back out. Uh-oh, you might have to stay zoomed, everybody. There we go. Okay. So that's the hard part done. That's it. All we're going to do now, here, come back with me here. All we need to 
do now is mix the wet into the dry. So straight in. All the way in. Give it a little scrape. And if you're like me and you don't love washing up, now is the time to put a little squirt of dishwashing liquid in your saucepan. Okay? And then let it sit for a while. Still on your warm stove top if you want to. together and then we're going to pop them on a tray. So, give it a little mix. I'm aiming for 12 with this but this is the first time I've tried this size in a batch. So I might need to add a touch more water and it might not make all 12. We'll see how we go. It seems to be coming together quite well though. Make sure you scrape down, get all that liquid moving. Now you want to go for a round walnut size when you put your cookies on your tray. Speaking of trays, I'm going to get one ready. These are pizza trays. So the air goes through them, but it also means they can get quite drippy. So if you don't like cleaning your husband, just use a regular cookie. Oh, husband. I just said cleaning your husband. I meant cleaning your oven. If you don't like cleaning your oven, use a real uh, regular cookie sheet. I'm just going to use this because I find the air flows really good. Okay. So, walnut size. You want to take a little scoop. Alright, make it look all pretty, stick it on. You don't have to squish them down. They don't need squishing. Okay. I don't really go for perfect shapes, but you can if you want. You can get a little uh, round tablespoon measure and go that way if you want to. I think the reason I don't go for perfect shapes is because I want the kids to enjoy making it too. And I find if I put too much pressure on them to get everything looking perfect, they don't really enjoy the cooking process as much, right? Now, my husband, on the other hand, I do tend to nag him. <laughs> but that's just because apparently that's my personality with adults. Okay, so that's it. Next tray. Space. What do we do on the other tray? Six fifths so far? Yep, six. We'll go for another six, see if we can make it. The heat of your hand is going to really help with shaping as well. It will feel like they're too small and that's okay because they should spread out and if they don't spread out much you can press them down at the end while they're still warm and make them bigger and thinner at that point. Oh, I may get 13 out of this batch. Okay, so I've got a little scrape in here. Put that together. So there's no egg in these, so if you want to give somebody a little bit of dough, I don't see a massive problem with it. But I'm not a chef or a doctor, so I can't guarantee it's going to be fine. <laughs> I just know that I've eaten it before and I've been okay. Okay, so these are going in. Both trays at once. And how 
long do we cook them for? 15 to 20 minutes. All right, set your timer for 15 and then check. in the oven that was nice and easy and it was really really enjoyable because we did it nice and slow we took our time the ingredients are really simple and they're really affordable you know you're spending a dollar or two on each ingredient and look how much leftover oats we have for example if you're cooking with kids baking time is the time where you can teach them all about washing up while you're waiting so I definitely recommend if you've got the kids with you have a sink full of soapy water ready to go. Wash each utensil as you use it, and then you'll find that they'll start to get the hang of doing dishes without even realizing that's what they're learning. If you're by yourself and you don't want to wash up yet, that's okay. I like to wash up while I wait, but you don't have to. You can go and enjoy your life for 15 minutes and then come back and check on those cookies. And then if they need another five minutes, whack them back in. <laughs> Set your timer again so you don't forget, because who wants to do all of that effort and then have burnt cookies, right? Burnt air packs. Okay, I'm going to go. I'll take a photo of the biscuits when they're done and let you know how they turned out because we are trialing this new sizing um, and ingredients list. So I'll keep you posted and I'll see you later. Oh, don't forget, I forgot to say at the, front, at the start of the video, I've got a free download for you today. It's called the Simple Pantry Pack and basically it's three PDF sheets that share my favourite hacks and tips and, you know, just answers to questions that people ask me about keeping a pantry organised the simple and easy way so what do I stock for my pantry staples I've written that in there I've got five quick handy tips that help keep your pantry really organized without interfering too much with your life and there's something else in there I can't remember but you can click on the link on this video and check it out and go ahead and grab it for free if you're not on my freebie list just sign up using the link on this video if you are on my freebie list go back in your emails and see where I've linked you to the freebie library it's already there waiting for you so you don't have to sign up again Okay, everybody, I'm going to go. It was nice talking to you, and I will see you next time. Bye.